Hey everyone, I'm Alfred. <clears throat> Welcome back to Halo 3. I have recently partaken of a meal. Wow. Now there is a man getting got. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, I, uh, I had a little snack, uh, which is good, because I was getting rather peckish. Uh, and then I just basically came back in. I hadn't even closed this fucking thing. Man, they love playing this theme, especially right now. This is one thing I've always loved about the bubble shield. It does not prevent anything at low velocity only high velocity things like anything fired from a gun or thrown from the hand it will do nothing against a truck driving into it they're not small or high velocity enough that was how um mass effect initially worked with its things uh mass effect shields were based on the speed of things Which is why you could have an energy shield on and not, like, shoot your chair away from your body when you try to sit down with it. That's the example that they used famously. Nothing like some just goddamn Halo music. If I remember, yep. So as though the one scarab in Halo 2 wasn't enough of a set piece. They've just been giving us scarab after scarab after scarab after scarab. This is our, like, fourth scarab? That'll be our fifth. You know, maybe I'm asking too much for the defensive capabilities against fuck-off plasma gun, you know? But on the other hand, maybe I would like technology to advance to the point where I won't get shot out of my thing before it has a chance to blow up. Who knows? You also can't aim up very high. I guess they haven't invented that yet. I do this every single fight in Halo. Wherein I bitch about how shotgun technology is worse than it is in the real world in Halo. And I find that improbable. Wow, that was a couple of words at once. I find that improbable. That shot. No! Damn. Anyway, that shotgun technology is worse than we have on Earth. Specifically that you have to manually load every shell. I think that's silly. No. But like... I also think that, like, for a... A, a future Earth that has gone out of the way to do everything... In the, in the name of Big War. You're, you're getting your butt there, gotta say. Oh, man. So, that was pretty good. Do 
I even need to shoot? Because I think clearing out... Jesus Christ. This is something I feel was made for co-op. Oh, look, two scarabs. One for each of us, you know? White hats, huh? I think it's conceivable that I can actually have time to get back on this thing, so let's try it. I'm safe and in cover, so I should myself the chance to let my help. I don't know why I took damage. Okay. Go time. Get away. Perfect. Now unfortunately I don't have the uh, chance to get a checkpoint here. You don't say. Think about Key's younger and Key's elder. I think both of them just say things that are completely unnecessary for most of the game. I think they say more unnecessary things than anything else. Like, alright, you uh, shot him good, keep shooting. It's like, really? We will continue shooting the thing that isn't dead? Wonders never cease. As though we had any other plan. Dick gets parked on my thing. Actually, this one. Oh my there. Irony. Now, don't you do this to me. How fucking dare you? fucking impolite, I've got to say. Well, that's fair. I'm just getting a little sick of it, okay? Let's go for a ride. The music can't go anywhere, so it's just some fucking 16 year old kid who thinks he's cool learning to play Halo on piano without actually learning anything past the first couple of notes. And part of that's on me, but it's not as though the game is built around you dying over and over. But on the other hand, maybe they should have considered it. They did program lasso difficulty into this. Are you serious, dude? Who? 
Sorry, I got distracted by the idiot on the right on the on the scarab. Who threw a power drain down? I suppose that there's a boost on this thing either. Like, as though getting on this thing isn't hard enough. They gotta go the extra mile. Got room for one more? All right, I have gathered that there are two scarabs. I wonder why that's in there, that voice line. I know that they, like, have it for military, like, purposes, but... Could a Halo player really be so adept that they could miss the two scarabs? It's kind of a big deal. It's this whole thing, in fact. Shooting at your own guys. Alright, get away, get away. First scarabs down. All units, concentrate your fire on number two. Are there units not already shooting at these things? I feel like that would be something of an oversight. If that guy very clearly and openly says into open channels, there are two scarabs and everyone in the world, like wherever the hell we are, doesn't focus right the hell in on this. What are they doing, man? I appear to get off from the left side. <clears throat> I appear to get off from the left side, so it'll probably be more strategically advantageous to air a little to the right. Go time. Now, is the pi is the pilot still in there? How about my hornet? I mean, because the pilot is that thing. That's a bunch of uh, the worms found in uh, hunters. Both scarabs down. Well done. <laughs> All right. Now what? Oh, right there. Oh yeah, minor detail. Truth firing the rings. Wacky days are here again, I guess. Found a way into the citadel. It's waiting for you on the platform, Chief. Go. The flood scales the citadel's far wall. Activate this bridge, Oracle. Oh yeah, I can turn this back up. Oops. Property die by mine. Not that. Calamity! If only we had more time. All right, that should be fun. Coolio. This is what, episode 7? I don't think we're going to manage to get out of here. Um, uh, on 7 episodes. Maybe 8. But if I had started doing 45 minute episodes earlier, which I had considered, we would have. It asked, and I answered. 
For a moment of safety, I lost damnation. Oh, is she on the TV too? That's kind of cool, I guess. My faithful, stand firm. Though our enemies crowd around us, we tread the blessed path. In a moment, I will light the rings, and all who believe shall be saved. Chief, how close are you? Not close enough. <sighs> that the best you got. <laughs> Stop! You imbecile! He wants you to kill him. I prefer that you do not. What is the matter? Big shot. Can't start your own party. I admit. I need your help. That secret. I love the little landing gear coming out. Johnson, sound off. <laughs> Get out of here! Not without you. You delay the inevitable. One of you will like the rings. You cannot hope to kill them all. You're right. Do it. Me and you. Now. No! Uh. I've never seen one of those things walking around. Your forefathers wisely set aside their compassion, steeled themselves for what needed to be done. I see now. You don't know him. I like the one that's out. So yeah, plot Only twist. you can halt what he has set in motion. They translate that incorrectly? Or subtitle it? He clearly says halt. But the subs say stop. Whatever. So yeah. Not only are the Flood not a priority, we're in fact now working with them because they are that much of a problem. And like, man, you made a religion out of the, the gun that kills Flood. And here we are not using the gun that kills Flood to kill Flood. And in fact, we are using it for something else. And so here the Flood are out, uh, like, overrunning it. And yeah, now we have an entirely new, like... Th this, is, this is weird, because we have worked with Elite. We have worked with elites before. And as the Arbiter, we have also worked with the Covenant proper. Where's your fuel rod? Oh, you. Yeah, we've worked with the Covenant. We've worked with uh, the elites. How could I have known the parasite would follow? We have I never ever worked with a flood before, and I don't think we ever have again. And I don't think we'll get a chance to. 
The flood primarily exists outside of the galaxy now. Spoilers. I love you, Keith David. I hope he knows that. Like, some actors, you know, you don't want them to get too full of themselves. Wow. That was wimpy and limp. Some actors, you know, can't get too full of themselves. You don't want them to get ahead of themselves. But, like, Keith David's a guy where, like, I really hope he wakes up every day knowing how much people love him. Because, goddamn, Keith David's fucking awesome. Oh, I've only just noticed that the fuel rod bounces if it hits the ground before its little pop. Uh, hello? Jesus, where did he even come from? I guess no chance of us cramming a vehicle in here, right, guys? I wonder if I could just wait. It's not like there's a big obnoxious timer or like any other indication that uh, I have to wait here. So maybe we can just let the flood work their way in. The thing is, I would be remiss if I skipped out on killing brutes. Oh, jeez. I got a bug bite on my leg. As I record this, it's still uh, warm enough for mosquitoes to be out. I also don't know that my apartment complex uh, doesn't have fleas. Just in the grass or something, I guess. I don't really know where fleas come from. I'm not entirely sure I don't ascribe to the miasma theory that they just show up sometimes. All over, Jesus, thank you. Now that's a guy who can stop a lot of problems in his way. Alright, Arbiter, you're on him. I get the feeling he's not. Foofa doofa. And of course, anything that doesn't get got. Yep, there you go. Anything that you don't clean up will get got by the uh, flood. And our uh, our alliance is good for the next, like, 30 seconds, I think. You know? There's not a lot that you get to do with the flood. So far are we along the path, but I must stray to hear the clumsy patrol Know this, my brother. They may foul the way with their charred and broken bones. All right. What's next? Cortana, I think. Stop the rains. Save the rest. You got it. Can you see, Arbiter? The moment of salvation is at hand. 
will not last. Your kind never believe in the promise of the sacred ring. Lies for the weak, beacons for the deluded. I will have my revenge on a prophet, not a plague. My feet tread the path. I shall become a god. You will be fooled. Nothing more. Wow, that's no! rough. Thank God that the button to wipe out all life in the galaxy is just one button. Just on or off. God bless you, keep David. Like, it's not enough that you're an all-knowing, super sapient being. But you're also so full of yourself, you know? The fact that he's like... That was one thing that was always really cool about Halo 1 and about Halo in general. The the way that the uh, back to the, lift. Find a way down. the the villainy just keeps trading, you know. Uh, for those who don't know, way way back in the day, Halo was actually supposed to be a RTS. Um, like Halo Wars is. But it was supposed to be like StarCraft. And StarCraft, for those who don't know, is well, well known for its three main factions. Humans, who are normal and in the middle. Protoss, who are rich but rare. And Zerg, who are common but weak. And, uh... One can see how certain members of... Halo and its species and relevant factions do in fact match up to this. The Flood obviously being common and weak. So yeah, the huge constructed world that Halo takes place in, the massive mega future. I'm a thief, but I keep what I steal. Most thieves do keep what they steal. Like, unless they steal money, but, like, you just spend it on things. That's the nature of money, you know? Pardon me. A lot of you guys, huh? Be careful. Man, it's getting creamy in here. I don't like that. Nothing but just blech in the air. Thank God for this garbage shoot. But yeah, like, replace Protoss Zerg and Terrans with UNSC what do you see? slash, you know, just Earth. Covenant and Flood. Honestly, it would be cool to have, like, actual Flood in Halo Wars. They show up for a single level. But other than that, not really. It would also be cool if... Because one thing that was always really cool about StarCraft is that... It had a campaign, of course it did. And it had three separate campaigns. And each one was about a different faction. And so you got a unique view of the universe through this faction's eyes. A unique challenge with unique, you know, problems going on. It was great. And then, as mentioned earlier in this very LP, uh, Blizzard got weird. So playing StarCraft isn't comfortable. I want to see if I can get like a second-hand copy 
of StarCraft, like a disc, I might this honestly LP it. The ring you destroyed. When did you know? Just now. But I had my hopes. What will you do? Light it. Then we are agreed. A tactical boss will completely eradicate the local infestation. I will personally oversee the final preparations. Though it will take time to... <laughs> How will you learn? But yeah, again, it's something like... It's something kind of comparable to like Half-Life. Cause in half that is just a picture. It's so obviously just a painting. It's a good looking painting, but Hey also just like the second to last level of Halo 1, we uh, get there via Banshee. Anyway, um like compared to Half-Life 1, like your your method of fighting swiftly stops being aliens and then quickly becomes gross. Cortana's in there somewhere. Quickly becomes fighting Marines. And then Marines get totally supplanted by aliens. And in fact, aliens and Marines will fight freely. And that's cool. Um And it's something that is represented in uh, Half-Life 2, but usually it just... Occasionally zombies will be there as like a stage hazard for uh, civil protection to deal with. Other than that, not really a whole bunch of things. I wonder if Duke Nukem Forever ripped this off. I mean, Duke Nukem Forever does steal a lot from... Duke Nukem Forever is known for stealing from Halo. Uh, for those who don't know, back in the day, a lot of things trying to be the new Doom. Duke Nukem was one of them. And its thing was that the protagonist was like a horny dude, bro. Like, look at that. Is that not totally Duke Nukem Forever? Anyway, much like with Gabe Newell, Child the protagonist, the nope, the I main director of Duke Nukem. I offer no forgiveness kept trying to find a way to push the envelope and kept restarting development of Duke Nukem 4 which is called Duke Nukem Forever and uh, I don't care guys either of you I don't care um, and so Duke Nukem Forever took about like how long was it like 15 years to come out I want to say and at some point people stopped wanting it to come out because there's no way that it could live up to the decade of hype that had been before it you know because like no matter how good it's going to be it's it can't be that good it's one reason why I kind of don't want to play Half-Life Alex. because like it's not going to live up to the I don't even remember how long it's been a seven Coming up on, uh, it's 14 years now since Half-Life 2. It's not going to live up to the hype. I, I don't think that it could, which is why I haven't played it, even though I'm a huge Half-Life fan and Half-Life Alex has been out. And I think you can even hack it to play in a... not... Uh, not VR. Anyway, yeah, Duke Nukem Forever had the potential to be like Doom 4, aka Doom 2016. Two corpses in one grave. That's a great line, but I'll get back to you, sir. Um, where it's like, holy shit, it's like shooters haven't been in decades. And like, if Duke Nukem came out and it was like that. That's all I am. I don't care, you guys. Stolen thoughts and memories. 
Yeah, if, if Dude Nukem came out and it was like, oh, you carry 10 guns on your back and you don't have regenerating health and you have a lot of health, then it would be like, you know, a return to form for the shooter genre as a whole. But instead, Duke Nukem Forever comes out and you got two weapons and regenerating health just like a Halo. Instead of what it could have been, which is like, like everyone wanted. You know, a uh, return to form. But anyway, um, there's doors that are, as I mentioned, Duke is extremely horny. And you're floating. That guy was floating. And the worst part about Duke being very horny is that the universe will go out of its way to um, make him right in this. I mentioned earlier, actually, uh, much earlier in this LP, I was commenting on, like, a game that makes you feel like this, like, superhero too much, even though you haven't necessarily deserved it. And I was commenting on how, like, I feel like it is earned when it comes to Chief. Uh, not sure for anything else. And that's another big problem with Duke Nukem Forever. Like, everyone goes out of his way, everyone goes out of their way to suck Duke's dicks. In some cases, literally. And to make Duke right, no matter what the, the situation is. Like hitting on a single mom in front of her son? Creepy, weird, don't do it. Speaking from experience. But like, the kid's like, wow, Duke, you're awesome, and there's an annoying young kid voice. The mom gets all weird and molesty towards Duke. Mag Muscles made an awesome point that Duke Nukem Forever should be like The Dark Knight Returns. where it's like the world is unrecognizable and Duke is out of time and out of date and he's coming in for one last job because he's the only one that can do it. But almost in like a V for Vendetta state, he's created a world where he can't exist, you know? Because eventually you save the world enough times and it'll become a saved world, you know? There won't be any villains. Alexander wept for there were no more worlds for him to conquer. And so there is no space for this, like, amazing world saver, you know? If you've conquered everything, then there doesn't really need to be a conqueror. And if Duke Nukem Forever was like that, it'd be pretty great. But it's not. Anyway, in, uh... The tangent of that I was getting on is, um, in Duke Nukem, there are doors that work much similar to the ones that I've been going through. Uh, and they're very clearly intentionally designed to look like an anus. Uh, and, and Duke tickles them with his finger to simulate the hilarious act of anal sex. Because, you know, these games are for like 12 year olds. Don't look at me. Don't listen. I'm not listening, Cortana. Don't worry. Uh, back on topic for Halo. Two corpses in one grave. Wow. I should have eaten sooner. I'm like exuberant and full of energy. Uh, two corpses in one grave is, I want to say, also the title of an excellent Halo short story. It's a well-documented fact that by now Halo has a shitload of books to go along with all of the um, video games. Not as many, like, comic books or movies or animated shows, but it's got uh, primarily books to back up its video game source material. In fact, I think one book might have come out before uh, Combat Evolved, making it technically a book-first property, but the book mainly came out to hype up Combat Evolved, so I'm not really going to count that. Um, and there's a really, really good short story, uh, from, okay, so it's kind of from Cortana's point of view, but it's during all of this shit, uh, 
and by the time I actually got my hands on it and read it, I had had enough experience with Haley, so I I knew what the hell was going on with him. I also used the occasional victory. Fuck yeah. God, video game th flamethrowers suck, but especially this one. The fact that you can walk into your own flame should never be a thing that happens with anything, and yet it's so common across many different video game flamethrowers. Like, that should be like step one with using a weapon. That the weapon cannot accidentally endanger the user with typical average use. And yet here we are. Because we all want to play a video game version of the thing. And the one game that came out on the original Xbox is a pretty decent uh, facsimile of it, but like, eh, it could be better. And fuck it, it's not like there's many other thing games going on. Damn it. I wonder how, if I could just go, you know? I'm kind of being reminded of uh, one of Ana's meltdowns. Jolji's, from Jolji's Ana, the little cartoon series he's producing. I mean, it's like kind of a cartoon, but it's mostly like a, a let's play of a video game that doesn't exist. Anyway, so the reason that I hesitated on saying that the story I was talking about is from, so it is possible, it can be done. Um, the reason I hesitated in saying if it's from Cortana's point of view is that it really isn't from her point of view. Because she and the grave mind are linked, two corpses in one grave, as it was so eloquently put. Um, their minds are being shared, and I remember it really did an excellent job of getting across what it is actually like to have your mind forcibly penetrated to have to share the one special place to you the one place that is just for you with somebody else it's an altogether alien and very eldritch feeling and phenomenon that really is kind of unheard oh yeah I've got this what the hell was that uh, and the fact that it was gotten across so well is pretty cool. So, yeah, I always remembered it fondly. I was like, what a weird, cool thing. glad that, for a number of reasons, I'm glad that Halo didn't turn into a Mac-only RTS franchise to, you know, try to counterpoint uh, StarCraft. But for one, I would hate to meet a guy who's like, yeah, I love playing as the Flood. I've run over with weapons that are good really far away, but I'm not really flush for things that can handle stuff at a distance. Which makes you guys a big fucking problem. I am rife with energy swords as well. The carbine feels really weak in this game. I mean, who knows if it is, but... I 
I feel like this could be a good level to go through with friends. Good. Take that, you overgrown cactus. Stop shooting at me. Not every day you turn around and find your shotgun at a monster's neck, but, you know, it's one of those fortuitous lucky good things when it happens. Something that's nice about Halo. You're, you're, the, the game design and the, the feeling of the armor and everything, like, it guarantees that you are supposed to take damage, you know? It's a part of it. It's built into the game design. Taking damage is what you're supposed to do. It's why doing a, like, no damage run of Halo feels psychotic as compared to something like Demon Souls or really any RPG. Like a straight up and down like shooter. Yeah, that's pretty logical. Time has taught me patience. But asking in new freedom. I will know all that I pose. Look at the top right corner. Oh, it's the light of that thing. It's the light of the energy sword. Yeah, those are Duke Nukem Forever doors. That's what sparked this train of thought. God, this this level's a slaughterhouse. Maybe I've spake too soon when it comes to uh, having eight episodes. I guess we'll find out soon, though, right? Fuck. I fumbled the buttons. That's on me. This is another thing that you don't really get in Half-Life. Sorry, nothing but segues here, but uh, like this many, like people don't really think that non-regenerating health is built for this many enemies. Cause like consider like uh, a Doom Slaughter map, like those are, those can be really fucking hard. Like, to try to get through that many monsters. Because you only have how much health you spawn with and how much health there is on the map. And, like, sometimes, yeah, you just gotta get through it with what you have. And, like, I would see this many enemies in, like, a Half-Life and I'd be like, oh, boy. But, like, I always feel like I have so much ammo. Sometimes it's not for guns that I like, but I have so much ammo and I can always switch out and get a completely fresh weapon. You know, it's not that I'm, you know, reloading a gun that I already have. It's that I need something completely new. And I can get that. Easily. And that's great. <laughs> I 
Whoops. It's something that I don't necessarily feel is the case with uh, Doom. Because, like, I feel like you go through the uh, standard amount of Doom enemies really quickly in this game. And, like, some of it is because they can give you really strong weapons. But the other side of that is that they can take it away as well. That's one of the big things. Because, like, with Doom, you know, they kind of have to guarantee that your weapons have to be stocked to a certain extent, you know? You're always going to have a certain amount of BFG shots. You're always going to have a certain amount of rocket uh, rockets. You know, it, it is honest and justifiable that we can expect the developers to give you X amount of goodies with which to kill demons. But with this, there, there isn't a guarantee that you'll get uh, certain weapons on certain maps or levels. And because of the weapon system in this game, you don't feel cheated, you know. With Doom, you got your six buttons. Those all give you those all give you weapons. Some of them give you two weapons. <laughs> anyway, you, know, you you have your eight weapons all through Doom. You make it right. I think so. You should. You have six buttons, and two of the buttons do two things. That guy's getting in the floor. Jesus, I'm being shelled here. But yeah, in, in, in Doom, if you don't get all of your weapon slots used and filled, then you feel as though you're being limited and you can't play your way, you know? But in this game, you have two weapon slots... And there's like, you know, 30 weapons. And they'll give you 10 to choose from, maybe. And it's like, figure it out, you know? Every single level becomes its own new puzzle. And you always get new combinations to try, you know? So like, your chief loadout is always what two things you have. And then in this game, if you have any equipment, then that goes on there too. And in Reach and On, then it's like your two guns and your armor ability. And that's even cooler. Guys, please. I gotta say, I, I can't hate the line, I'm a monument to all your sins, no matter what. It's a fucking awesome line. You found me. Damn right. Hey, you know what? It's been a while. Next episode will be the last one, though. Promise that. Even if it's like two hours, it won't be. It shouldn't be. But even if it is, next one's the last one. But I've been Alfred. This has been Halo 3. Uh, thank you guys for coming. Uh, see you guys next time. Bye.